Hey, this is Justin Johnson. Thanks for joining me here in the tour bus. Today I'm going to teach you one of my favorite Pink Floyd songs, Wish You Were Here. I'm going to start by going over that great intro guitar part that comes right at the beginning. Sort of has a melody and a rhythm intertwining to set the mood in the song. And then uh, one of my favorite acoustic guitar solos of all time is the solo that David Gilmour plays right at the beginning of this song. And I figured if I'm going to teach this lesson for the three string guitar, I can't leave that out. So I'll teach you that too, note for note. And then we'll go into strumming the chords. And uh, those chords I'll give you my preferred voicings for the three string guitar, but I'll also give you some voicings to make it a little easier if you're just starting out. So uh, first we're going to tune up and then we'll get started. Alright, before we start the lesson, let's tune up. This three string guitar right here is in an open G tuning. This bottom string is the A string off a standard six string pack. We're going to tune this down to a G. The next string is a D string. I'm going to tune that to a D. And the next string is a G. We're going to tune that to a G, an octave above that low string. There's your open G. Okay, we can break this song down and make it a little more simple by thinking of it as three parts. You have part one, which is your intro rhythm guitar. Starts like that. Uh, part two would be the lead part that's played over that. Sounds like that. Then you have part three, which is your rhythm guitar part that plays over the verses when the singing's going on. So you got part one, two, and three. Let's start with part one, that intro rhythm guitar. What's cool about this guitar part is that there's a melody being played on the bass strings that starts out. You play that melody and then you start strumming that E minor chord. Now let's break down that first riff right there. That's going to be using the G major scale that starts with the low G open and then a hammer on from the second fret of that low G string to the fourth fret. At a hammer on you hit that second fret and then you literally hammer your ring finger or your pinky whichever you want to use hammer that down onto the fourth fret. Try that again. After you play those three notes, go up to the open string on your D, and then the second fret. So those notes together, and then you strum an E minor chord, and this E minor chord I'm playing is fourth fret on the low G, second fret on your D string, and open on your high G. You add that to the end of that riff. Then you strum up and down. After that, you play the next riff. That's open on the high G string, second fret on the middle D, and then open on that middle D string. And then you strum a G chord, which is easy enough, that's just open. So that riff, that second riff. Let's play those two riffs together. So 
once you get that far, then you switch that riff up just a little bit. You go to that part. And that riff starts on the second fret of the D string, then the open D, and then the fourth fret on the low G string, and then the second fret of that low G string. And when you hit that, that second fret, you want to strum a D chord, which is second fret on the low string, open on the D string, second fret on the high G. That'll make a, a D chord. So again, that last riff. Then you go back to your first riff again. I'm going to play that first part slowly and uh, play it along with me if you can start to incorporate those different riffs in with me. One, two, three. G. So that's part one. Now part two is the guitar solo. Now the guitar is soloing over part one. So if you have one rhythm guitar player playing that part that we just learned, part one, then this solo works right over that. Let's break this part down. Now this solo note by note. Starts out with that riff right there. Now this is just like that hammer-on we did earlier, but this is three notes. You hit that first note, which is the D string, the middle string, on the seventh fret, and you hammer on, you pluck it on the seventh fret, and then hammer on eight, nine. See, I'm only plucking that first note. And then I'm hitting the, the high G on the seventh fret. This is a riff that's used a, uh, several times in this solo. That's followed by, which is on the high G, nine, and then, oh, that's the ninth fret. And then the ninth fret on the D string. And then the seventh fret on the G. So that whole section. And then you come down to the fourth fret and do a pull off from the fourth. Fourth, second, open. The pull off is basically the opposite of a hammer on. You hit that first note, that's the fourth fret on the high G string, and then pull it off. As you're pulling that off, you pluck it with your ring finger of your left hand there, or your fretting hand. Do the same thing. You pull off those three notes, and then you hit that open D, that middle string. And then you slide up, 
to the fourth fret on that low G string and hit that D open again a couple times. Is that last part? So this is what we have so far this opening solo. Now we're going to do a, a new technique here, which is going to be a slide of two strings at the same time. We're going to go all the way up here to the 12th fret. We're going to hold down our bar, which is called. You can use two fingers to do it, or you can bar. I use uh, one finger to do this. Hold down the high G and the D string, both at the 12th fret. Plug both of them and slide them up to the 14th. So you pluck them at the 12th, and you slide them up to the 14th. Again, you can do that with two fingers if you want to. You do the same thing on the same strings, the D and the G. You do that from the 7th to the 9th fret. And then you do a riff where you slide up to the from the seventh to the ninth, and then seventh, and then you're gonna play the fifth fret on the middle D string and the fourth fret on that high G to end that riff off. So the whole riff is. That might take a little while to learn whether you're doing it with one finger to bar it or two. Just take it slow, uh, stay patient, and it should uh, fall under your fingers there with a little practice. Do it a little slower. I'll bar it. Now the next riff is going to be very similar to that first one. Again we start with the hammer-ons from the 7th, 8th, 9th, and then the 7th fret on the high G string. fret on that middle D to the ninth fret on the high G. And then we bend, start with a bend on that high G string. Start with a bend before you even pluck it on the ninth fret and then come down after you pluck it. So you, again, you bend on the ninth fret, pluck it, and then come down to the note. So you, after you're done with that bend, then you go down to the seventh fret on the high G, then the ninth fret on the D string, then back to the seventh fret on the high G. And then on the 7th fret on that D string, you end that phrase. So again. Then you do this nice, uh, almost a country riff. And 
that starts with a bend on the ninth fret on the middle string. And then 7 9 on the high G. And then the same bend you started with, middle string on the ninth fret. And then kind of choke it off. Back to the seventh fret on that D string, on that middle string. Then you do almost the same thing again, but just slightly different. Which again, you start with the hammer-ons on the D string. Just like you did last time. And then you bend that. So bend on the ninth. Just like you did last time. And then end it with that ninth fret bend to the seventh fret. So let's play that intro guitar solo, that part two of this song, nice and slow. Now we're going to get into the real meat of this song. We're going to get into the chords that you strum while you're singing the song. And they start out, even though this song is in the key of G, the first chord in the progression is actually a C. And the voicing that I've chosen for C major is going to be 5th fret on the low G string with your pinky, 2nd fret with your index finger, on the D string, the middle string, and then that high G will be open. If that stretch is uncomfortable for you, then alternatively you can play the C just by barring the 5th fret, or you can play that C major just by putting that 2nd fret on the middle string and leaving the other two G strings open. But I like the, the way that sounds, if you can do that stretch. So get a strumming pattern going. So, starts off, C. And then a D, which is 2nd fret on the low string, open on the middle string. 2nd fret on the high string. And then you go to an A minor, which you can do just by barring the 2nd fret. But I like to add the 5th fret on the high G string. Again, if you don't feel comfortable with that stretch, just bar it on the 2nd fret. You'll be fine. And then your G chord, your G major. And those are the only chords in the song. So let's play, I'm going to call out the chords to you. You've got a C, a G, a D, and an A minor. We'll just play those chords in different order for the chord progression. So it starts out, go to a C, D, A minor, G, then a D, C, A minor, an 
open. That's the G. Try it again. Go to the C. To the D. To the A minor. To the G. song just by going to that intro. So that's the whole song really. If you know those three parts and you learn those you can play the whole song from start to finish. Uh, like I said it's in the key of G. If you want to solo come up with your own improvisations you can use the G major scale or the G major pentatonic scale. That's the scale that most of those notes or all of those notes really from that solo come from. So that's a good starting point for choosing your own notes uh, in your own solos for the song. Once again, this is Justin Johnson. I appreciate you watching. See you next time.